You're listening to Sarah Hagen Backstage, with interviews and insights from years inside the music industry. Join Sarah as she talks with masters of their crafts, finding out what makes them tick, both inside and outside of the music business. This week, Sarah talks with Ronnie Venucci. Welcome to Sarah Hagen Backstage. My guest today, Ronnie Venucci, is best known as the drummer in the band The Killers, but he is also a singer and guitar player in his own project, Big Talk, and he is also a really cool photographer. We talk about all of these subjects today, and we also delve into how the quarantine has changed us all and given us a new perspective on life. Come along with me as we get a glimpse into the life of Ronnie Venucci. Ronnie Venucci, welcome to the podcast. What? Oh, we're live. <laughs> we are live. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm, per- I'm perfect. Um, it's, the sun is out. Um, you know, another day on earth. It's, it's great. We have to be grateful, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's the only way to be. Yeah. So it has been a while since I have seen you, since I've I've seen your face, since we have chatted. Um, how have you been through the past year and the whole, you know, quarantine and all of that? What has life been like for you? I've been fine. You know, I I I always I I've I'm in the honey bucket. I've got nothing to complain about. You know, I I there are people. I always think about the other people that that you know have to be out there in the world and, and, you know, everybody helping out, you know, I, I, I haven't really thought of myself except for just lucky to be in the situation I'm in. Um, it's a drag, you know, we had a, a, a record come out and we weren't able to tour it. We were very excited to do that, but that's like, wow, who wants to hear somebody in rock band whine about that shit when there's way <laughs> more going on. Um, but yeah, it's been great. It's been an, an opportunity to like be at home for this long. I've ne- I, in the past twenty years, I've never been home so long. Right. I, there's there's like flowers in the yard I've never seen before because I'm always gone in the summer. Um, wow. So it's nice. I'm the healthiest I've ever been because I'm eating at home. I'm not out to lunch. I mean, I'm out to lunch. <laughs> but it's a uh, Man, it's it's just it's been fantastic. I've been doing a lot of road trips. I hate flying anyway, so just been me pulling a trailer across the country with my dog and my wife, and 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 you know staying co vigilant. Yes. Uh, oh, I like that word. That's a yeah, good one. That's my wife's word. Uh, Very nice. We'll give her credit for yeah, that. Uh, Olivia gets uh, full royalty rights on that one. Yes. <laughs> um, but it, it's it's been a it's been a lot of fun. It, I worry that I'm so used to like this laid back kind of life, this, this, you know, hunker down mm-hmm. type thing that I'll never want to, to, to leave, to leave it. Um, but I am excited to like at the possibility of getting out, getting out again and, and going to a real backstage. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and it is, it's interesting that you say that though, because, yeah, how used to this are we? It's it's like become the new reality. And I think, you know, I said this recently, but at the start of the pandemic and quarantine, I think um, especially those of us in the music industry, our lives were changed so quickly in mm-hmm. so many ways. And it was a really hard thing to get used to um, at first. The thought of not getting on a plane, not being in a venue, um, not being even in the office with other people and not knowing when that, that would come back. So I think it was a harder thing to transition into this life than it, than it is now. I think we're all kind of like, oh, this is the new reality. But, um, but yeah, I think all of us are really considering the fact that we are moving out of it and back into um, something close to what it used to be like in a lot yeah. of ways. Fingers crossed. Um, well, I hope we've all learned a lot too. I think we're all probably washing our hands a little bit more. Um, um, I'm very glad to not be up in people's space or having mm-hmm. people be in my space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get out yes. of my circle, man. <laughs> uh, 
I, you know, I kind of like it. I think I was um, already starting to practice social distancing long before it became a, a, a mandate. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of silver lining. Like I said, you know, we're, I'm we are cooking at home almost every day and and mm-hmm. growing food in the yard and just you know making it making it happen. Um, it's it's been cool. It's been cool. We have bees now, and had to take my dog to. Uh, the emergency vet uh, because she was going into anaphylactic shock. Oh no! Oh my goodness! But so we you got have... some honey. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was. Like, and the dog is okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's fine. She's, okay. She's taking a nap right next to me right now. So. Oh good. Okay. Yeah, but, so... but yeah, it's 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 been you know there's like I said it's been a lot of silver uh, in this. Um, I I don't um, you know. It's been been a lot of bad shit too, but I'm trying not to focus on that. Um, right, exactly. Well, you know, I think it's um, you recognize the the bad part of it, but you're focusing on the good part, which is important. Mm-hmm. And and you just said a few different um, a few different ways that you're more in touch with nature. You know, you just talked about you have a garden, you've seen flowers growing in your yard that you never saw before. You're yeah. you have bees, so like a beehive, right? Like you're. You have yeah. bees with honey. Well, the bees. Um, we we had uh, we have honeybees in a in an old oak tree. And, oh, okay. And the hive has gotten so big, to to so where it's now um, bifurcated and and was swarming to another place. Wow. To, to, to you know call home and still keeping the oak tree. So there's still a, there's still a hive there with mm-hmm. bees, but. Um, they called the beekeeper <laughs> and we got, they were, they, we swarmed to this, this place in a, in another tree on a branch. And there was just like probably 20,000 bees, which is kind of a, on the smaller side of a hive mm-hmm. um, that split off. The hive itself was about 60,000, but I think we got about, um, uh, oh, maybe about 40,000 bees in the swarm and we caught them in a bucket and I uh, had a bee suit on and got wow. to kind of a waterfall of, of bees. That was a lot of fun. But the, <laughs> but my dog was curious and, and uh, she kept, she, she, you know, it was fine for a couple of hours. And then she was uh, kept nipping at the bees and got stung. And, yeah. Poor baby. Well, I'm glad she's okay. But I do, I do think it's interesting how, you know, a lot of us have been um, connecting with nature a little bit more because the musician life, you know, there's, so much of it is lit, done like in the dark, you know, <laughs> like it is. Yeah. In dark rooms and you pasty skin and yeah. 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 That's, yeah. It's, it's, it's nice to sort of get, get a little uh, sunshine and, and nice get out there. And I think maybe like, you know, we'll all keep a little bit of that as part of our, our new lives. I hope okay. so. I mean, certainly paying attention to, to, you know, to how, how shit works, be it, you know, nature and science and, and, and virology and bacteria right you know hopefully we're we're a little more uh you know scientifically literate i guess uh, exactly because of this whole thing yes we all know a lot of words that we didn't know before that's right (laughs) Right? (laughs) um so that's how you have been let's go way back in time to like you know the early days of ronnie venucci and talk about that a little bit um I would love to hear a little bit about like you, you basically grew up in Las Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, we've talked a little bit about this before, but I just want to hear like, how was it to grow up in Vegas? I think a lot of us think about Las Vegas as, you know, casinos and all that kind of nightlife and the crazy like trip to Vegas kind of thing. But you had your childhood in Las Vegas. I did. Yeah, so I grew up and born and raised in, in Las Vegas, Nevada. My mom worked at Caesar's Palace as a as a cocktail waitress for forty years, mm-hmm. and my dad um, was a bartender and taught school. Um, the I three brothers. I'm the oldest. I have two younger brothers, and um, one of them's still in Las Vegas. The other one's in Arizona. And I sort of float around Utah and California and mm-hmm. wherever my trailer takes me, <laughs> wherever it's the two of us is, man. Um, yeah. And uh, so, you know, growing up, um, 
you know, it was sort of normal for, for, you know, kids to have parents work in, in the service industry and, you know, mm -hmm. that being working in the hotels and casinos. And, um, and so we would get used to parents keeping odd hours, you know, mm -hmm. dad or mom's got a shift that's, you know, starts at one in the morning or something like that. And she's not back until, you know, 10 the next morning. And, right. You know, being quiet when you get home from school and, and that kind of thing. But um, with that sort of abnormal uh, work schedule and a, a, just an abnormal place um, to, to begin with, the, you have access to a lot of cool things. And, and one of those, those, those things are, are like, you know, having uh, access to getting to know old strip musicians that used to work with uh, you know, Dean Martin and, and Frank Sinatra and all these, you know, the, these guys that came from maybe the East Coast. A lot of them came from East Coast and settled in Las Vegas for work. And, um, they, you know, they taught on the side or, or, or some much of them were still playing. And so as a little kid, I would get to go and 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 see these guys play. And and I think I got a bit of a, my musical bug from from that sort of um environment and, and and also being first born i think my, my parents were probably too broke to like afford like any sort of um help uh, other than like the neighbor for like the uh, babysitter so mm -hmm. uh they would they would often <laughs> just like you know uh wake up and like put a record on for me and teach me how to do the, you know do the records and flip the records and i would just be just be listening to records as a little kid um I got to learn about record players pretty or probably earlier than most kids in my generation. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of my, my TV or my cartoons were records. And I just fell in love with, with music in that way. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of the early days I would, um, go out and there was a little spinet piano in the garage. My, my aunt was a pianist. Mm -hmm. and or is a pianist and you know in her spare time and so I had like one of her junkers and then we had a, uh, a washer and dryer and a spare fridge out in the garage and I would just go out and play on the mm -hmm. washer dryer and fridge and sing to myself for hours and um you know I, I was pretty I was pretty free um yeah that led to me getting a uh, a drum set I was like this kid is out here for like you know free and it's it's going on four hours he's just out there singing banging on our appliances yes <laughs> we should get him a, a a drum set and and i got a a, a drum set an old royce drum set mm -hmm. and then um i graduated a year later uh to getting for, uh, as a christmas present a nice uh red sparkle Sl slingerland set um, nice in the 60s and it was uh it was very cool. And, and I got my, you know, my, my drum lessons. He's like, Oh, he's, he's sticking with it. He's, he's mm -hmm. playing beats. Let's, let's get him, let's get him some lessons. So I studied with a bunch of, uh, um, you know, strip musicians and, and old timers in Las Vegas. And that's, that's kind of how I got my start. It was that and Boy Scouts. There was nothing else. There was just that's, that. that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and first of all, like how great of a sound is it? A washer and dryer, like it's amazing. It's, it's so amazing. good, <laughs> right? I, the next Killers record, you know, we're gonna get even more far out, and that's to abandon the drum cell. Although I will still, you know, play the uh, Zildjian cymbals. Yes, right. Yeah. Zildjian cymbals and a washer and dryer. Well, yeah. Like, brought to you by Whirlpool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should sample it though. I wonder what it would sound like. Sample. It's great. I mean, we've uh, stranger things have happened, uh, but you never uh, know. It, it it was such a great sound that these old, the old um, uh, you know, sheet metal class. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. There's no plastic on these things back then. Right. So, yeah. We're talking was, about the top loading washing machine, right? Exactly. It was metal. Just big yeah. boom, you know, a nice crack on the edge for your snare sound. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun. I actually, somewhere in Las Vegas storage, I have old tapes that I think about um, unearthing. When I was like in, in single digits, I would make tapes i would just take a, a cassette recorder and and make these 
songs and me <laughs> I didn't have anything else to like record with it was just yeah. my, my, my voice and like beats and I just wonder if those are around somewhere that would be incredible you should totally yeah. oh, unearth those yeah. strangely enough I I would do uh radio shows when I was a kid like oh really tape tape like songs off of the radio and then I would like tape my own like intros to the songs and things and that and was <laughs> Lionel Richie yes. yeah Yes, so much fun. We had tape, you know, tape decks when we were kids. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to ask you too, what what records were you listening to when you were younger and your par parents would, um, you know, set you up with a record player to listen to? Oh, um, there was a heavy, heavy, um, there was a lot, there were a lot of Frank Zappa records. So it's like, you know, nice. Joe's, Joe's Garage was yes. like, you know. <laughs> Uh, that, that Frank Zappa was my surrogate father, um, <laughs> which probably explains a lot. It was your babysitter, right? Frank yeah. Zappa. Yeah, baby, babysitter Frank Zappa. That, and, you know, I could remember the Gary Wright album scaring the shit out of me as a kid. I'd, I'd like, put that on to get scared on purpose. Oh, and no. then, like, quick, quickly take it off. Dreamweaver is a scary song. If it, it sounds like a mur it sounds like some sort of mystery murder thing is going to happen, and so I, I put it on deliberately to scare myself. Yes. And I just thought, oh man, well this you know music can make make you feel um, scared and alone and, and watching your back, or it can make you feel totally enlightened or happy mm. or like tough. Or sensitive, you know, it's it just just the sounds, you know, never mind lyrics, just the sounds itself. And, I, and so I think I was, you know, uh, probably interested in that um, pretty early, pretty, you know, pretty early on. It, it, it's a fun experience. I wouldn't change anything. Right, right, exactly. And, that, and that's pretty, that's pretty incredible, though, that like that shaped you. And I also I can think back to being a kid and like, um, you know, I wasn't too young, but I, I remember the, um, you know, thriller, Michael Jackson's thriller oh, man, yeah. coming out and the video that went along with it. And I just remember it was on VHS tape and it would be like, I would play it and then like hide my face. And, but really similarly, it made me recognize, you know, at a fairly young age that, you know, like the effect, the emotion that goes yeah. with it how it can make you feel. And you're right, like some music is scary or kind of evokes like a scary um, thought. Um, but then like, there are so many other things that like evoke the emotion of, you know, fun or happiness or sure. light, you know? Um, that's incredible though. And so you studied with, you know, kind of some some musicians that you, oh, you encountered along the way. Yeah. Um, oh man. A couple of just old, old guy, Irv Kluger and Nick Stmanis and, uh, Oh, Mark Kempton. Mark Kempton was a dick. I'm saying it publicly. <laughs> what a, what a dick. Um, but he, he, he was probably, um, right in, in, in some respect, but he, he sort of gave up. Oh uh, no. He, <laughs> <laughs> he made me graduate early. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a private lesson thing, and it was it was summertime, and and he I think he had me on a pad for a year, and his oh. studio was in a it was a, like a home studio, and he had he had like ten drum sets all set up around the studio, and so it's like you know you bring a kid uh, who who all he wants to do is play drums, and mm -hmm. you're having them hit. Um, you know the old Remo pads with the you can with a with a flathead screwdriver you can make the tension different you know and mm -hmm. it was almost like the head it wasn't like the yes. real, real feel hadn't been invented yet it was just precursor older. maybe to to that yeah it was yeah. the old Remo ones with the gray on the outside mm -hmm. um, and it was just that and learning all the rudiments and stuff and and that was just not fun it was it, there was nothing about it to me that was like musical I couldn't. I couldn't, I couldn't go anywhere with it. it. It was, and I didn't understand at the time that you need these tools to mm -hmm. sort of get to the next step. And I was just, mm -hmm. I want the, I want the next step. I want the boogie now. <laughs> Give me the boogie. Yeah. And the guy was like, "You want the boogie?" I don't know what he said, but he, <laughs> let's just call it the boogie. You want to play the drums? <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes, I want to play the drums." And he, he did it like. 
fine, play the drums. <laughs> and 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 it's not like I was coming out of nowhere. Like my mom or dad would would leave me there for an hour or an hour and a half and then pick me up. And at the end of the lesson, Mark would play something. He was a really, really good drummer. He played mm -hmm. all over the all over Las Vegas. Um, and I would just be, I would go home and just try and emulate him because he would just be, it, it was just so awesome to hear him play mm -hmm. and just, just to stand behind somebody like that. Um, and so that I, I wanted to play the drums too, but he would never let me play the drums. So he let me play the drums. And that was the last lesson. He was just like, I can't teach you anymore. Oh man. That's <laughs> so, so hard. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know why. Maybe I was just, I was just, he just saw the, the, you know, the frustration or, or maybe I was just so good that he's like, I can't teach anymore. That could be it. Could I think that's, it. that's the answer. I highly doubt it. I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, man, that was, that was so much fun. You know, I, I love watching still to this day. I love um, watching people play, you know, when I, I did that little, when I did my, uh, solo thing, uh, Big Talk, and mm -hmm. Brooks was in the band for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, that was so fun, just like screwing around and and and, and watching him play. And um, uh, I remember one time, I don't know where we were, but uh, Jimmy Chamberlain, he's one of my favorite drummers, is, uh, what's, so is Matt Chamberlain, the Chamberlains. The Chamberlains, uh, yeah. A different spelling, but... Uh, he let me sit uh, next, well, behind him during a during a show, and I learned so much. It's just so fun to. Uh, and Alon, me and Alon were in the studio a few weeks ago, and just watching him as just a monster musician. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm pretty sure you you give a guy like a you know a wooden spoon and an old bike wheel and you know <laughs> some sort of horn. He can make that sing too. He would absolutely. He would. It's just it's just a lot of fun watching um, musicians and and uh, in particular drummers. You know, there's not a lot to hide behind mm -hmm. with the drums. Although I'm I'm seeing a lot of people hiding behind a certain kind of style and mm -hmm. a, a certain sort of method of of learning. Um, you know how to play as fast as you can and shit like that. But sure. Um, for the most part, playing drums is sort of a very transparent, um, you know, you almost feel naked up there because, or at least I do, because there's this, there's this, um, there's this thing that you just can't control. Like everything's moving, all four of your limbs are moving, your head's moving, your face is making weird faces. It's, <laughs> I love it when somebody looks so cool playing, playing drums, like, you know, uh, there's a lot of, cool looking drummer matt cameron you just had on the show yes looks, looks fucking cool when he's playing drums he does and and calm too matt always so looks calm. so like what's he doing up there? Is, yeah. he, is he thinking about taxes yeah <laughs> what's you know no but he, he's, he's just it's, so I'm, comfortable right like yeah you see, i'm envious so of that and so, and i have to say ronnie you and i'm not just you know saying this because we're talking right now but you are one of the coolest looking drummers. You play fantastic, but I just think about you playing up there and you 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 always have like a fan, you have like the Beyonce fan blowing yeah, and yeah. your hair is blowing. my fans when I'm off tour. <laughs> They're just like but, floor fans. They're like the for, right. for like drying floors. The oscillating, oscillating fans. Yeah. But no, but seriously, you're up there and you have, you know, you've got like big movements and you just look cool. So I have Thank to just you. make sure oh you know God. that. that Absolutely. Feel better. I sometimes I've just, I've just given up to the, to the, to the fact that I'm just a, a giant spaz up there. And <laughs> all that I care about is that it's moving the music in the right direction and that the, the, the music is sounding good. I've stopped caring. I've really, well, <laughs> up there. <laughs> but I'm glad it looks some somewhat cool. It looks great, and you, you know, you you joke about looking like a spaz up there, but you have a classical percussion background. Like you're you're trained, oh. you're a trained drummer, and and your um, you know, your music is fantastic, and and not 
not easy. You know, it's not not the the easiest stuff to play. It so is, you have to give it yourself. Is so, it is some so credit. easy. You're wrong about that. It is. <laughs> you make it look easy. That's Thank the thing. You. Wow. Thank you. That's that's, that, those are nice words to hear. I'm Absolutely. gonna go and sing it to the world. There you go. Tell everybody. I'll I'll carry the fan around for you. I'll yeah, be your yeah. your uh you know. I can't leader. breathe up there. You know, it gets so damn hot. And if you're doing yeah. like, you know, seven songs in a row, which are all just like, you know, burning and mm -hmm. you know, like any break, it gets stale, kind of still up there because they mm -hmm. want that fucking, you know, stage fog to sit. Yes. So it diffuses the light and all that stuff. But I can't breathe. With I understand that you've got hot lights on you and you've got yeah. fog in your face and yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it's not just for looks, it's function. The fan it is, is it is 100% for function. I <laughs> wish it wasn't blowing around up there sometimes, um, but uh, oh. it is, it is so much more comfortable. I'm, I'm like the dog in the back of the car. I need the window <laughs> down. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Letting the, the wind blow through your hair. Yeah. Um, but so just getting back to your time um, in Vegas, you mm -hmm. attended UNLV, right? Yeah. Um, and during that time, it was it consecutive during that time where you were doing um, wedding photography? It was, yeah. <laughs> that was my last gig was a, was, was a, a wedding photographer and, and, and that got me through uh, school. Um, Man, I did it right. I was like, I had some credit card debt, and I got a student loan, which was mm -hmm. a lower percentage of interest than than um, than credit card. So I paid off all my credit card debt with my school loan, mm -hmm. and then I paid for school with like uh, waiting tables, and then I did my you know my a couple years at, at a wedding chapel on the strip. Um, but I was also in like ensemble. So I got, I got, um, and marching band. Mm -hmm. So school was basically paid for. I just had to pay for books because they, they give you these scholarships. Um, and it was a great experience. You know, it's, it's, I, I'd been playing drums for a while at that point, but I was looking to sort of stretch and, and also, you know, I was 20 and mm -hmm. I was a little worried about, um, or 20, no, I was like 23. It was a little, I was, I was sort of didn't know what I wanted to be when I when I grew up and I and I saw a Tom Waits concert and I was like shit I'm going back I'm going to school for music I'm going to stop this biology thing I don't want to be any kind of doctor I don't want to you know do anything else other than music mm -hmm. I should try and find something that um, scratches the itch but also makes me you know a viable uh, person for employment so I was double majoring in um, percussion performance and music education so um, nice. that's what i was going for and then right before right in my my last year of school we started playing shows as the killers and it, i started missing a lot of school a lot of class mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh i ended up taking a lot of um incompletes Mm -hmm. semester and I just went to my all my professors and said hey you know I I have this gig in Chicago I remember it was a gig in in Chicago that was pretty important and um I got I got everybody's blessing they said they basically said go mm. our dream to work this is why we do this so if you if you're going to be working mm -hmm. go come back and finish it and so yeah about 10 years later I did go back and finish it uh, my undergrad degree and then started my master's degree in composition, but I only got about a year into that. So I still have to complete that. And I hate leaving things incomplete. So, Oh no. At one, no. At one, at one point I, w I will go back, you know, so like my future kids don't have anything to like, you know, rest their laurels on. Oh my goodness. I I'm yeah. sure your future kids are going to be um, very impressed by you and, you know, um, I I think it's so interesting that you, you know, you started with the killers, but um, one thing that kind of, that I remember from back then is that um, you guys were signed to a British, was it a British label or British management no, or something? It was just a little um, independent label out of, uh, yeah, some ex record label executives started a, uh, from Arista back in, or Arista, yeah. wherever you want to put the 
emphasis on the syllable. <laughs> uh, but, and they, they, they started this little label called Lizard King. And right. um, it was originally an EP deal and we ended up showing them more songs. They're like, well, let's just do an album deal and let's split it 50-50. And they're like, okay, cool, free trip to England, you know. I've never right. been there before. There you go. That sort of, you know, the, that was that was our first record called Hot Fuss, and uh, it's like seventeen years ago. Eight. That's amazing. Yeah. That 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 flew by. That's, yeah, that's it, crazy. It has, yeah, it has. Yeah. But I do remember thinking initially when I heard the when I heard Hot Fuss for the first time. And we have to um, acknowledge Tina Clark because Tina, um, you know, from from the UK, she's the one who was like, "You have to hear this band." I just remember her, um, and she, you know, she's been a great friend to both of us. Yes. Um, uh, just a quick word about Tina Clark. If there was a, if there, if any employer, no matter what you did, had um, a an employee. Uh, 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 like Tina Clark, uh, your business would be so much better for it and would set such an example to the other people working alongside her. She, she, the first time I remember seeing Tina, mm -hmm. is she was running through a parking lot with yes. Zildjian bags, symbols. My, my symbols were lost. I wasn't officially a Zildjian artist and we were playing a festival in, in England. And I see this lady with blonde hair uh, running with a guy, who, Derek, her, her partner, Derek. Um, they were running. I'd never met her before, but I can tell she was carrying symbols because I, you know, the, the, the Zildjian symbol bag. Mm -hmm. And I'd lost, I lost my symbols, uh, or the airline lost my symbols, and I was, you know, was about to go on. <laughs> I had like, this <laughs> rental kit with like no symbols on it. It was just like two symbol stands. Oh no. And here she comes with these, with these beautiful uh, symbols that she had at the office. And, she, and, and, and I was able to do the gig because of her. And not only that, we became really fast friends, uh, lifelong friends mm -hmm. and man. Uh, and then, and then you're sort of like the, the, the American equivalent, you and uh, Kirsten and, and, uh, I'm so uh, so just thankful to know that people like you exist. The, the, the unicorns are real. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Thank you, uh, thank you but, for saying that. But yes, yeah, it's 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 it is so crazy, you know. And and it reminds me of when we it was a similar thing when we first met. I think um, I think you might have brought me some symbols at a little club gig in Boston. Mm -hmm. Our first, yes, time. absolutely. <laughs> Uh, symbols and class A drugs. I'm just <laughs> You're not supposed to talk about that, Ronnie Venucci. <laughs> but it's worth but noting, I... kids, that Ronnie doesn't do drugs and has never done drugs because he's too much of a pussy. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I'm, I've, I've always been scared of drugs. Um, yes. You know, I've seen it happen to other people. I was like, that doesn't look like it feels good. I'm, no, it does cool not look with, like a good uh, time. I'm cool with my unsweetened jasmine green tea. Right, and I yeah, I have um, flavored seltzer water here. So yeah. oh, we're, <laughs> we're hitting the hard stuff. We are. We're pretty hardcore. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm in the same boat. Yes, no, I'm a you know never never tried drugs and our bodies are temples. Yes, exactly. It we, just was never interesting. Although I did see, did you see the fantastic fungi movie? I did not. Oh, I did not it's a documentary that. on mushrooms. Okay. Yeah. Now, now that's making me sort of question my, um, you know, my, I don't know. My <laughs> Your abstinence. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have to say too, it's really interesting to me how many musicians that I look up to and how, you know, that the music that I love so, so much was created on drugs. Uh, yeah. No, and yeah. and that that says something, and I think I think a lot of it is that part of your brain that gets activated. That you know that kind of like it shuts down the whatever it is that is kind of logical like, kind of like, thinking, right? <laughs> yeah, the, shuts down the logical um, thinking, and and then allows your creative side. Yeah. Um, and you know, so 
Yeah, so we're not advocating any kind of drug use yeah. <laughs> on this podcast. Um, really trying not to. No, no. <laughs> um, but I just going back to when we were talking about um, Tina and everything in the UK, I remember listening to Hot Fuss for the first time. And I thought that you guys were a British band I, because of that connection um, to Britain. And it, it's interesting how like it's kind of followed you the the popularity the popularity in the UK for the killers um mm -hmm. is just amazing right like it's it is they were the first country to take us in they were the right. first one that sort of like let us know that um we were doing something right mm -hmm. uh, we spent a lot of time over there cultivating that and um it's in a lot of ways it's our it's our second home and yes you know as as you sort of travel and revisit cities and things like that you get this 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 thing where you develop you develop relationships and and you have friends in argentina now or in germany or mm -hmm. you know in australia and um it's really it's it's really it's a really cool thing that that happens and has happened um but england was the first first you know even before America, I mean, there was yeah. the, really, we weren't really even being uh, recognized. Uh, we were, you know, we had a small sort of uh, coterie uh, at home um, where we would, you know, we'd play anywhere we could. We did this thing that was sort of spearheaded by my friend, our friend Ryan party who, who who did these like dj gigs and then had a band play and then dj again it was all like really late and we we'd use these like sort of surrogate clubs you know mm -hmm. and oftentimes it was like these really sort of colorful places like there was a transvestite bar where it was a, a really fun place to go to and everybody would like dress up and 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 drag there was a punk rock bar right next door called the double down saloon and we did that. We did like sports bars where one night a week it was like there was nothing on TV, but the bar still was open, so we can go and play. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so we just played wherever we could. And uh, it wasn't until visiting England where they had like this scene, this thing that was going on, that was um, just a perfect spot for us to kind of um, enjoy. And, and yeah, it was kind of like the perfect grow. launch. Perfect yeah. launch launch pad. Yeah. Um, and I have to say too, I remember at that time in music, I had been really kind of searching for something that made me listen all the way through. Like I grew up on music that you would listen to the cassette tape or the or the LP <laughs> or then the CD all the way through. And it was like every song was sure, great, yeah. right? And and it kind of, you know, fit together. And there was something about one song into the next where you just anticipated the next song. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember hearing Hot Fuss for the first time and thinking like, I'm never, like I'm leaving this CD in my CD player in the car, you know, forever. Ooh. And like every song was just so good and catchy and cool and um and different kind of than than what i had been listening to at the time so i just have to say you guys did such a fantastic job and thank you those all were, the those were our demos we went to the yes. house in, Ber in berkeley and, and yeah we got to do these demos you know in his new studio and we were sort of the the the, the band that broke broke uh, that's his home studio in for him and then we had a couple of mixers do it up and just kept them, you know, they were all like one or two takes. We didn't spend any time on it. We sort of wrote a song and then went into the studio. We caught a Southwest flight up from Las Vegas to um, to uh, Oakland or Berkeley. And uh, we would go and, and uh, you know, record and then have, have, have like a CD with like mm -hmm. three songs on it to show people. And uh, it kind of grew from there. It's so good. And and I think, you know, maybe that's why it was so good because it wasn't forced. Like it was mm -hmm. just, it was music that you guys were coming up with. You weren't being like told what to do or how to do yeah. it, yeah, that, yeah. you know, yeah. um, but that's so great. And then, you know, and beyond the killers, which is just such a, such a fantastic and, you know, celebrated band, you have your own projects, which 
I love, I love to see, I mean, I love to see you drumming, but then I really love to see you, you know, playing guitar and singing. Um, yeah. When Big Talk, I remember you telling me about <laughs> Big Talk and I was like, what, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be singing and playing guitar and then, you know, Brooks Wackerman on the drums and mm -hmm. um, so great. How much fun was that just to get out from behind the drums for a minute? It was, it was, it was so much fun. It was like, I was having so much fun. It was hard to take it seriously. It got almost, <laughs> n n you know, Nothing I did was, I should have probably taken it more seriously if we had this <laughs> opportunity, but we were having so much fun. It was just, it was a lot of, you know, a lot of learning, um, a lot of listening and, and um, uh, told, it totally made me into, a, aside from getting to play with these great drummers, um, Alex Stopa was a guy I went to school with at, at UNLV, he's from Australia, from Adelaide, Australia, is also wonderful drummer and he he helped me when i played off the um the first big talk record he, he helped me with the live shows and he was a drummer and he was also great to, to 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 play with but besides playing with these great drummers it it taught me sort of um you know it's kind of like playing a different position you know in, in baseball or something like that all of a sudden mm -hmm. you're fronting a band you're, you know you're coming up with like a set list and it's all up to you and you've got to, you know, just all the things that, that, you know, I, I shared in and continue to share in with the killers was now sort of solely on my shoulders to kind of come up with because everybody was in other bands and I had to kind of, you know, uh, guide the ship a little bit more because it wasn't a, a it wasn't everybody's main gig, you know, mm -hmm. since, um, uh, it was it was a lot of fun. it was a lot of fun. I it gave me tremendous respect for everybody else in, in the Killers because mm -hmm. I got to play you know their parts. I did m most of the instruments I played myself on 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 the first record, and then I did a lot of them on the, on the second record. But I let Brooks you know he was playing the drums and um, the, the other guys were were playing their instruments too. And I got to like I got to still you know play a lot of um, you know my guitar and mm -hmm. a couple ripping solos but it was man it was such a uh, a fun experience and um i just had a lot of fun doing it i, I guess i don't regret having the fun that i had but i probably yeah. should be more serious which is like yeah we don't need to play those shows it's, you know it's just like let's just have fun when it's when it's not fun anymore i was just like yeah starting yeah to get I, it, you could tell that you were having fun with it. Absolutely. Thanks. And I, I give you credit for that, for, you know, keeping it fun. Cause it's not easy. Sometimes, you know, you feel the pressure to take opportunities that maybe aren't exactly what you want to do, but it's good to have the choice. Sure. Um, and so now, right now you are, well, the killers came out, you guys came out with an album mm -hmm. last year, which um yeah, last, last august we have another one coming out of this august and i heard that that it was um you guys had so many songs right you had all the all these songs and we're like let's release another album well weirdly right. enough that we had this stockpile of songs that were sort of orphans off the last record but we're saving that for the next record so yeah. that's and we instead made made a, another record which is which is quite uh a you know a bit of a concept record i like that very, diff very different from from you know normal killer stuff um so we still have that stockpile left and and we're still writing more so um it's always good to have a few um you know songs or a collection or an album even laying around just to, just to for sure um, it felt good too because you know we were getting ready to hit hit the road having just come off this record making process only to be told that we can't hit the road mm -hmm. and so it's very easy for us to slip back into record making mode and um continue that vibe that's great though i'm sure that you know the fans will be really excited to know that there's you know something coming out soon and then there's more stuff in the works and all of that yeah. Yeah. um and how about touring do you have any um you know uh, ideas about what will happen or do you guys have anything on the books now? We're cautiously optimistic. We don't want to be, you know, mm -hmm. the band that brings COVID back. Yes. Don't do that. <laughs> so, um, and also, you know, I don't know whether or not people are talking about this, um, 
but business wise there there's there's these you know now covid and covid related uh situations when it comes mm -hmm. to gigs are now part of a force majeure in in, in a contract yes Which basically in long long you know long and short of it is that the band's on the hook if the place gets uh shut down before the gig right um, <clears throat> so you have to be very careful you know you go and you, you you've got your traveling circus and you make it all the way to a place and they're like sorry there's a case we're not doing the festival we're not doing the concert um, I'm assuming my expenses, you're assuming your uh, expenses, and uh, by the way, you're not getting paid either. So there's, yeah. this, there's this component that there's this new sort of um, asterisk. Uh, like liability, uh, basically. Yeah, liability. Right? Yeah. The fans are accepting this liability. Yeah. Um, so I guess, so that's an element, but I, I guess the most important part of the whole thing is that we just want to make sure it's the right time. And we're anxious as if everybody, you know, to, to go and do some stuff. I know we have some stuff on the books, mm -hmm. um, Firefly Festival out near you guys. So we're, mm -hmm. we're supposed to do that. And a, and a couple other ones, one down in Florida, which I don't think Florida even had COVID-19. Uh, I don't, I don't know. That didn't I, exist down there. Again. Didn't. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's some things like happening and mm -hmm. uh, hopefully it's just like a, it's, it will happen, but uh, I'm being cautious. Yes, I understand that 100%. And I have heard about that, then, you know, the new liability clauses and all of that, which is making it really hard for yeah. fans to kind of commit to things. Um, cause you don't want to put yourself in that situation, understandably. And, um, you know, with just fingers crossed that the numbers continue to go down and it, you know, dissipates to the point where it isn't an, you know, an issue that needs to be held liable. Um, okay. So I was going, I was just going to say, you know, what I've been seeing from you on social media and, um, oh. kind of like brings things full circle to the photography, because you mentioned how you're driving around with your trailer and the dog and your wife and yeah. I'm seeing these photos that you're taking, which are just incredible. A lot oh, of, thanks. yeah, absolutely. Um, building, you know, you talked about how much you love, um, old, houses and buildings and renovating and i just see these photos of these buildings and you know with like like worn buildings that definitely tell a story right yeah yeah sure um yeah i'm kind of into that 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 you know sort of uh cultivation or or, or sort of you know preservation of old old shit i guess <laughs> um <laughs> And just anything that's interesting, really. It's, mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be buildings. It could be anything interesting. Um, and I have so much film that I haven't been um, that hasn't been developed yet that I need to get back on. But I'm 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 sort of not sure what um, I'm not sure if if I'm going to continue the whole Instagram thing. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm I've, it's it's such a time suck for me, and I find myself looking down more than I'd like to, to be, uh, you know, looking down at my phone when there's so much in front of me that, mm -hmm. that I'd love to experience more. And <clears throat> I, I, there's a part of me that just doesn't um, care that much to, 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 to be on the, on that platform to promote um, much, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it sounds kind of a dick thing to say, but like, I know it's the new, it's normal. It's a normal thing now. Um, everybody's got one. Um, but it just, it just feels um, wrong to me. It feels like my job is to be uh, writing songs and recording songs and, and, and playing on a stage. Mm -hmm. And I know that this is a, you know, a component to that. And it's, it's how you tell people about your songs and that you've got a gig on whatever stage. Um, but I'm just sort of leery about the, about the whole, whole thing in a nutshell. So I, I've been sort of sub as the kids say. I'm yes. Sub. yes, absolutely. I'm, and I, I'm sub. So I, mm -hmm. I sort of, I, I hit it once in a while. And like, if I get, if I get a couple rolls back and it's fun to, put them up but mm -hmm. um, i think instead i'll probably use it as a sub again if mm -hmm. i keep it 
Um, but I think I'm just going to put together books. I like and, that. Like limited edition books um, with just a few few copies. Um, so if people are interested in the shitty pictures I take, they can just get a book and not see it on <laughs> online. I'll tell people about it online, maybe as an as a tool for for getting the word out. But um, absolutely, it yeah. Seems, seems like it's better in a book anyway. So. I like, I, I would love that book. I think it would yeah. be beautiful. Um, yeah. And, you know, I don't think if you don't need to use Instagram and you don't need to use Instagram, like you, you know, you're, what you have going on is already being promoted. So right. I feel like you don't, you know, you don't have to do that. You can have your face looking up and what, at what's around you. So yeah. no I don't blame problems. you. Right. And then, you know, there's just so there's so many aspects to it, I think, that take up a lot of time. But we all know you're 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 not doing Instagram because you're going to focus on TikTok. Right. That's your <laughs> yeah. that's your platform. <laughs> yeah. I, saw, I saw Paul McCartney uh, do a TikTok. Did somebody showed me that. <laughs> that was uh, hard to watch. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, no, oh. it's just, you know, this, you know, uh, or Mick Fleetwood, you know, fellow drummer, also hard to watch just that that's the platform automates automatically makes somebody look just a little less cool. It, it, <laughs> it pulls back the veil a little bit. No mistake. Okay. Wait, what did it say? Uh, no mistake, big mistake. Right. Well, yeah. there you go. There yeah. you go. And you're very mysterious. So I oh. think you can, <laughs> you can. Keep the mystery going, yeah. um, but I do, I do love the photos, and Thanks. you know, it, it, you know, it's, it's just really cool that it kind of like comes full circle, and that was a passion of yours, and you're able to continue doing it, and I think it's important, um, you know, it's something that people appreciate absolutely, and I'm sure it's much different. The kind of photography you're doing now is much different than, um, you know, the the wedding Taking pictures of, of people exchanging nuptials. Yes. <laughs> on, the, on the Las Vegas Strip. <laughs> and you know what? Different. Speaking of that, you must have seen some some interesting um, oh, yeah. scenarios over the years. I mean, I'm, I must have shot, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of weddings. You know, we did, I guess I was shooting like probably, you know, between 10 and 30 weddings a day. Oh, uh, wow. And, you know, they're all 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Depending right. on which package you bought, you know. Right, right. And so um, it was. Oh, puppy, it's okay. Don't be scared. <laughs> Just the door that your big ass hit. That's right. That's right. Wide hips on my boxer dog. Oh. Um. Uh. Yeah. So you got to see, you know, uh, the, the the this this sort of uh, <laughs> this palette of people. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Who, who just just wanted to have just a quick you know, wedding? Somebody wanted to have Elvis wedding, you know, an Elvis wedding. Yeah. Uh, older couples who were there on vacation and and um, you know felt the spirit. Um, younger couples who are living the spontaneous life. You just you saw it all, mm -hmm. and that was, that was pretty pretty cool. Um, yeah. That's how I learned to take photos you know we, we shot film um and there was no digital uh you know screen to see if you got it and and so it was sort of being thrown into the fire and i learned how to take pictures like that right but now yeah. it's, it's much it's much more meditative you know it's much more of a, a you know seeing a, a, the city you've been to 30 or 40 times already um through a different different light which is mm -hmm. also very cool yeah. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. Well, keep, keep, keep it up. Cause I, I'm enjoying the photos and oh, like, okay. Thank you. you know, speculating. I just, I see, I see an old building like that. And like my, I speculate about like the history of it, sure. like yeah. who lived there and what life was like. I don't know why it just makes me, it just makes me think. Um, oh, of course. Yeah. So good. It's so yeah, good. I have, so, I, have, I have probably 60 rolls sitting in my fridge that I haven't gotten out to uh, uh, to be developed yet, but um, you know, uh, hopefully there's what you know three or four good ones in there. And we'll yes. get back on the gram, you know. Or, <laughs> or, I, I don't, I don't know. For for, for the time being, I'm I'm enjoying this approaching summer, and uh, yeah, this this feels good. It's good. It's definitely good. So besides 
developing the photos and all of that stuff. Um, you have, you're going to have an album coming out. You're going to have touring at some point. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. Um, sure. And then also, what are you, are you listening to anything? Are you hearing any music nowadays that's, that's like inspiring to you? Is there anything that's kind of like hitting you that? Yeah. Oh man. Uh, so this band out of UK, out of Bristol, uh, United Kingdom called Idols. Mm -hmm. Have this a new record called Ultra Mono. I'm in love with that record through and nice. through. I love listening to it. Um, I've just been listening to that uh, and a lot of uh, jazz. <laughs> so, That's great. <laughs> just tons of just tons of jazz. You know, just to see it, just and and sort of experimental music. Anything from like a, a fucking yoga playlist to to <laughs> uh, you know crazy you know avant garde stuff to you know, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you need the yoga playlist, right? Yeah. Chill. Absolutely. You know, mix it in. Um, get, just sort of exploring old, um, like 50s jazz guitarists. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, just kind of listening and, and learning how to play again. You know, when, you, when you're sort of off the touring, uh, it sort of, at least for me, it turns me into a little bit of a different drummer. I'm not trying to be as loud in my house because fucking paintings will fall off the wall. <laughs> and uh, so, so I'm, so I'm, you know, sort of getting inside, in touch with my my jazzier self, maybe. Mm -hmm. A lot of Kurope symbols. <laughs> there you go. Right. Uh, yes. I love yeah. that. Oh, uh, that's great. I I think it's great. Um, you know, and you. You're known for playing like, you know, rock music, but I, pl I, yeah, I feel, feel like you play it with like a background, like your, your background comes out, I think is what I'm trying to say. Oh, cool. You know, it just, yeah, it feels like you can, you can feel the jazziness in there. Like there's something, <laughs> there's just like something on top of it. I don't know what it is, but Sheen. something. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. So I know we all can't wait to, uh, to experience the new music and see you oh, guys. I can't wait to get out there myself. I, you know, I'm, I'm also a fan. And there's a lot of people that I can't wait to go out and, and yes. see. So this, this, I think when, when, what do they say? When, when things open up again, yeah. Yeah. I think that it's going to be, you know, a, probably a, it's going to be like a, a fucking Mardi Gras for two years. Uh, right. Uh, I hope so. Anyway, I think there's going to be this this sort of uh, renaissance, almost, you know, mm -hmm. of people getting out and boogieing again. Yes, I, I know. I hope so too. I'm looking forward to that time period. Lots of cre creation, lots of, you know, time together. People spending time together. Well, that's the other. Th that's the other thing. You know, this not to make this longer, but to, you know, there people are sequestered now. They're locked inside their houses, and a lot of them are really making some cool shit, you know, like mm -hmm. they're, they're forced to be creative because they can't get out. They can't do this stuff. They're coming up with new creative ways of showcasing their music or performing their music. And mm -hmm. it's, that's also really cool to see. I, like I said before, a lot of silver, but um, silver lining. And, uh, and so that, that's kind of, you know, the upside to this whole thing too, is, is being able to, to see people get creative on a, another level, like, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, that's 100% true. And I I really- You're, This show is a byproduct of that. Yeah, right, here we are. I know this wouldn't be happening. It, it, yeah, you're so right. All the, So many people who had things that they wanted to do or projects that they wanted to get involved with or mm -hmm. people they wanted to collaborate with. It's amazing how this time period where we're all, you know, sequestered in our own little bubbles have actually given people a chance to collaborate with others that they might not have been able to, or to like start something creative that they always wanted to do and just never had the time for, um, you know, and it's just it's things as simple as you recognizing that you've lived in this house and you haven't seen these flowers grow because you've never been home at yep. that time of year. Like that's yep. amazing, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's, it's, um, it's the little stuff, but it really makes you to, makes you realize what what you do yes where you go and and, and the, the time spent doing stuff 
yes both, both meaningless and meaningful it just sort of puts everything sort of in in a, a bit more of a focus in some ways Absolutely. in a lot of ways it throws a lot of things out of focus i think we're you know not to get too philosophical but i think you know as is a society um, um i can only speak to sort of my u.s experience but as a society it's we are really sort of struggling for focus i think there's a really it seems uneasy and um mm -hmm. sort of unbalanced in a lot of ways and um you know it's interesting to see people um sort of get the balance back or get the focus back um and, and yes it's challenging man it's challenging yeah. times we live in. yeah i i agree i feel like i feel like the focus went in so many different directions i mm -hmm. mean it wasn't just about the virus and the quarantine there was so much going on politically so much going on with social justice um so many so many things that needed to be brought to light that were brought to light and mm -hmm. You know, so I do. Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like maybe things are coming to um, some things or we're getting closure on some things. Maybe yeah, that's well, the right way to put I think it. There's an there's you know, there's this uproar and perhaps it's like it's technicolor because we're fucking mad about being at home and losing our jobs and losing our mom or dad or people mm -hmm. we know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been hyper people have been hypersensitive and, and and super angry or super happy or super sad. Um, and yeah, I do feel like we're sort of, we're understanding it now. We're starting to understand it. Like a lot of the, the, the fervor is still mm -hmm. there, but it's more controlled. And I feel like we're understanding stuff. Yeah. It, and it feels like because of that, there's more action. Like, mm -hmm. right. So, That's so the thing. it's like, stop waiting around for somebody else to do make change that you want to have mm -hmm, do it mm -hmm. do it yourself start with your little you know family or your mm -hmm. friends your community and just you know be better people right i you like know? that be better people that's that's be, be best people <laughs> right yes yeah. i agree i agree i think that's a, a lesson that we can all uh we can all take to heart just yeah. just try to be a little bit better than yesterday right yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Well, thank you so much, Ronnie. I appreciate your time. Likewise. It's fun to do this. I'm glad to, to, you know, be, uh, join the cast. As yes. it were. You know, you've got, you have a lot of re really cool people on your show and, and it's, it's been fun seeing little snippets of, of, uh, of your, uh, other episodes and I hope, thank you. I hope people are enjoying it as much as I, I am too. It's so much fun for me. So I am incredibly appreciative of, you know, you and um, the other drummers who have come on and given me a little bit of time and shared. So yeah. thank you. You know, we have a really honest, cool relationship and we've known each other for nearly 20 years. And, yeah. um, and you know, it's nice to just be in touch with you and 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 keep the communication alive no matter you know what you're doing but i'm glad you're doing this stuff this is really cool thank you so yeah. so much um but we will we'll see each other in person again soon I enough hope so. i hope so sure. and, and, and 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 kiss and hug the family for me especially your husband you know? absolutely and vice versa i will do you take care we'll take talk care. soon see you soon bye thank you for tuning in today Join us each Tuesday for new episodes of Sarah Hagen Backstage.